Good morning, happy weekend, or whatever time of day and day of the week you are watching this video. Today for me, it's Saturday, and it is a sophisticated Saturday where together we work through my to-do list and get things done around the house. The to-do list was scattered all over the place as it always is. I started off by making my bed as I'm sure you saw and then getting to laundry right off the bat. I had run a load of dark laundry and put it through the dryer. I actually did put in my blanket as well for this load. I usually wash that separately with other like items but just tossed it in because this load was a little bit smaller and I'm separating my items versus my husband's items. He'll come in and fold his own items, but I was going to fold mine and lay his out nice and flat so they don't get wrinkly. And I really didn't have that much to fold, which was nice. I wash all loads once a week, which usually means I end up doing about a load a day or so. There's a couple of days where I don't have to do any laundry whatsoever. I usually don't end up doing laundry on Mondays, but pretty much every other day of the week, I like to run one load of laundry. I've gone back and forth about this. Sometimes it is nice to do a bunch of loads of laundry in one day and just get in that routine and groove of switching stuff over, washing, drying, folding, all of that, because I just got back from a trip and missed my cycle of having the normal laundry done for the first part of the week. So I ran three loads right when I got home and it was kind of nice to have a bunch of loads all done at the same time. So maybe something for me to think about, but for now I'm gonna stick to my once day laundry. Then another task that I always do is a quick pickup of the living room. It wasn't bad today at all. You'll see I have my fall decor out. So this is a little bit of a preview. I have a fall clean and decorate coming out with me next week on Wednesday. So you can check out that full video and see all of the fun decor that I have. But for now, I am just going around and trying to pick up all of the spaces. So I'm in my mudroom now, which just felt really cluttered. I had a lot of stuff out of place there that didn't need to be stored there. I had jackets of Owens that were hanging on those hooks for I don't even know how long. It has been well into the 100 degrees here. It's been like 104, 105, 101, 100. It's just been very warm, so we do not need to have these jackets sitting out for Owen. The 10-day forecast doesn't show much below 90 or mid 80s. So I'm going to bring those up to his room and get that stuff put away, as well as there's a couple of items of returns that I'm gonna bring to my office and get those set up and packed up with a return label. Into Owen's room, I am hanging up those jackets. He is now 20, almost 21 months. So he has a lot of stuff that's still 18 months that's sitting in his closet here. And I'm not sure because a lot of it is for warmer weather, whether it fits him or not. So there's a lot in his closet right now that I haven't rotated out. And I think I'm going to just move it over a little bit because I was running out of room above his laundry basket. And I like for him to be able to easily access his laundry basket on the floor there. So I'm going to put up his big bulky coats that are more in a toddler size, put those up a level and scoot everything over. So there's more space with his laundry hamper. And after that, I'm gonna take down his August bookshelf. This was school themed. If you follow me on Sophisticated Motherhood on Instagram, you know that I switch out this shelf with every single month and do different books and a different theme. So I am in the basement 
putting away those books from the month of August and I'm gonna get ready for my September bookshelf which the books are actually supposed to show up later today and tomorrow so I don't have all of them so I'm not gonna set up the bookshelf today but I am gonna do like a football theme sports theme because my husband's big into football and I think it'll be fun I can't really think of another theme to do because October I'm more gonna do Halloween and then in November, I do more of a fall Thanksgiving theme. And then, you know, December is like Christmas and Hanukkah and so on and so forth. So I thought a sports theme would be perfect with football season coming up. And Jim actually doesn't know that I'm going to do it. And I think he's really going to love the new books that I got for Owen and the new theme. And I think Owen will love it too. He loves balls. So he will love reading all the books and pointing like soccer ball, basketball. And this has just been so much fun for me to to do this is the last month that I have never done before I started last year in October so you'll see these four little bins that I have are pretty full so each bin has three months in it and I am going to print out some labels and finally label them because I have now decided the way that I want to organize it and it fits perfectly in there and then while I was down here I always try and add a little bit of decor to the shelves or like toys or something usually like from the target dollar spot or something like that but if he has a toy that i can put on the shelf i like doing that so we had this rubber duck football player and a small little football that i figured i could put on there as well so stay tuned for what the final shelf looks like but for now we are back up in the kitchen quickly put a few things away before we get started with today's recipe and although i have my fall decor out it is still, like I said, 100 degrees or something like that today. So we are going to do some burgers and enjoy a little bit more summer food. And I am going to do these copycat In-N-Out burgers. If you have never been to In-N-Out Burger before, we really like it. And it's a double-double. So it's two burger patties with cheese on a potato bun or like a brioche bun. And right now I am just attempting to make the special sauce that In-N-Out Burger has. When I typically make burgers at home, I do love having caramelized onions. But this recipe had a specific instruction for how to make the onions the way that In-N-Out does it, which I thought was really interesting. So I didn't cut them into strips. I chopped them up like the recipe said to do. And I'm doubling this. I did get two pounds of beef instead of one. We love having leftovers. So I started with one onion, but realized if I'm gonna double it, I should grab two onions. And I'm going to add some butter and avocado oil to my pan, get that going while I chop up the onions. And you'll see it later, but you end up adding some salt and pepper also to the pan, as well as apple cider vinegar. So I added in two tablespoons again because I doubled it. But if you're going to do just one onion, it is one tablespoon. And it starts off with about five minutes of cooking the onions at a relatively high heat. And then you're gonna knock it down to a medium, medium low temperature and continue to cook and stir and stir and stir every now and then and just check in on it. But I think it was probably another 10 minutes after that it said, add a little bit of water if it starts to get too browned. But these onions were slow cooking on the stovetop for like 30 minutes. They were so delicious and well worth the wait. While those onions cooked, I decided I was gonna prep some of the other ingredients. In-N-Out burgers typically do not have avocados on them, but we had some fresh avocados and I really like avocados with my burgers. So I'm going to slice up the tomatoes, get the avocado slice, and I'll probably just put those on a little plate on the side there and we will build our own burgers at the table.
I'm doing a lot of this in advance. There's still more on my to-do list today, but I am doing a lot of it in advance because some of this takes a really long time. Like those onions I said take 30 plus minutes. And I'm also going to make my favorite french fries, which I will leave a recipe for in the description box below. They are so delicious. I was out of some of the ingredients that I like to use with them. And at this point, I don't really follow the recipe, but just the general concept of how to make these potatoes. They're so crispy and delicious in the oven. It is very helpful if you have a mandolin, especially for this recipe to make French fries in the oven, to make them nice and small and uniform. This stainless steel one from OXO is really great. These potatoes are probably smaller than I would have liked. It's a lot easier to have a bigger potato to do this, but small ones are fine. It just leaves some extra scraps that I have to cut by hand. But back to my point there, these potatoes take a long time to get nice and crispy in the oven. I keep them in there for quite a while. And I'm not only going to make these regular french fries, but Owen really, really loves sweet potatoes. And so I was going to cut up a few sweet potatoes for him as well and make him some sweet potato french fries because I know he'll be very happy if we have some of those for dinner as well. Part of the key to these french fries is to coat them in very hot water and let them sit for about 10 minutes before you strain them out and pour them onto a dish towel and let them dry out and then onto your pan. So you'll see there I was cutting some of the extra scraps by hand because the last little bit doesn't fit into the mandolin. And then I am straining out the potatoes after it had been 10 minutes, getting the second batch in some hot water and going to make sure those are fully covered and get to chopping the sweet potatoes, which I decided to do by hand. I have done those in the mandolin as well. I just find that when it's on the french fry setting, it really is tough with those sweet potatoes because they're so much thicker and heartier than regular potatoes. I can do sweet potato slices pretty easily on the mandolin, but it actually is just easier for me to do these by hand and use a nice big knife to cut the sweet potato into little fry shapes. You can easily toss all of the fries back into a bowl and get them coated that way, which is probably the best solution, but I just dumped them onto my cookie sheet and there were too many fries. You wanna be able to spread them out so that they all have space and they're not on top of each other. They did cook down and ended up having a lot more space to roam around, but I would suggest doing less. I did onion powder, garlic powder, I did pepper, and then I had some truffle salt that I added. The ingredient that I usually have is dill, and I usually add quite a bit of dill, and that is such a nice touch on the french fries, but that's okay, it was fine, and having the truffle salt was a really great addition this time. Those will be in the oven for quite a while, and I will check on them and turn them every now and then and mix them up on the pan. But while those begin to cook, I'm going to get the meat prepped. The thing about the In-N-Out burgers is that it is a really nice and thin patty. So for each pound of ground beef, you're gonna put it into six small patties. So I was trying to get it into thirds and then cut each third into half again. And I have 12 because I have two pounds, roll them into balls and then get them pushed out into flat patty shapes. For seasoning, you're just going to salt and pepper them on each side. I just was basically salt and peppering them on one side and figured I'd put them down reverse side, salt and pepper side down on the pan. And then once they hit the pan, I would salt and pepper the top side. But that's pretty much it for what I'm doing right now. I am actually going to run downstairs and get a workout in. 
first I needed to change because like I mentioned, it was so warm out and I was starting to actually get warm cooking, I think with the oven going and stuff and throw on a pair of shorts before I did. I did check on those sweet potatoes and add in the couple of tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. So here I am in the home gym downstairs, getting in a little bit of a workout. I'm starting with a warm up here. I am doing all these pregnancy safe workouts that I follow a little workout video. So you'll see in a second that I'm following a workout video, but it's so funny looking at, I feel like I look pregnant when I was wearing my sweatshirt earlier, but not crazy pregnant. And then when I get in a tight top like this, it's funny watching back how do I move around basically. It's starting to feel like I am really pregnant and crazy to think that I still have quite a ways to go. What I love about these workouts is they don't have to take a really long time. Even if it's just like 15 minutes or 30 minutes that you can get in, some movement is better than no movement. And that's basically what I strive for. I do try and get in more towards the 45 minute mark if possible, but some days that's not possible. And other days I am able to spend a little bit more time in the gym, do a little bit longer, whether it's adding in some more stretching or light yoga or something like that. But it really just varies on the day. These burgers cook on a cast iron skillet and you'll see that I did top them with more salt and pepper and then you're supposed to add some mustard to the top of them, which is kind of interesting. Never done that before and then flip them over, which I was not great at because one of the burgers fell on top of the other burger. And then it said to use American cheese, which I don't really like, so I opted for cheddar cheese and put those on top and leave them to cook until the cheese completely melts. It did leave some pretty big marks on the cast iron pan, but it ended up being just fine to cook the rest of them that way on the cast iron. And while the burger is cooked, I'm going to continue to multitask because it takes about four minutes per side, I would say. Instead of just standing there and watching the burgers cook and doing nothing, I decided to empty out the dishwasher because it had just finished during my workout and I had acquired some more dirty dishes while prepping the burgers and dinner for tonight. I did also toast some buns in the oven at this time. I got those little potato brioche buns that I was talking about. Put a little bit of olive oil on each of the buns and then just broiled them in the oven for a little bit. Although I did do it a little bit longer than I wanted to. I always have trouble with the broiler. I think I'm keeping such a great eye on it, but it's like I need to set a timer for one minute or 30 seconds or something because my mind just wanders. It's great to multitask and continue to get stuff done, but it's very easy to forget when you're trying to do too many things at once. So if that's the case, you're trying to cook a bunch of things at the same time, make sure you set yourself a few timers, reminders, even if you think you don't need it, especially when you have the broiler on because a difference of 30 seconds or so can mean the difference between beautifully golden brown food versus burnt to a crisp food.
Once I got those burgers all done, I was putting away the rest of the ingredients as well as putting away the dirty dishes and cleaning off the kitchen countertop because it was about dinner time. Everything was ready. Jim and Owen were ready to eat. So I just wanted to get that stuff put in the dishwasher. Then after dinner, I can finish putting everything else in the dishwasher, run it overnight, and be ready to unload tomorrow morning and do it all over again. So we are gonna sit down for dinner. We have the whole family here. I hope you enjoyed this sophisticated Saturday. Maybe you wanna give this recipe a try or you're inspired to do a quick home workout, whatever it might be. I hope you have a great weekend and until next time, I will see you all later.